So first, you have to understand that the blade is very sharp. It has to be in order to cut through the wood. See how easy that is? Wow, that blade is really sharp. And that reminds me of something that your grandfather told me when he gave me this knife. He said the blade may be sharp, but it being very bright. What do you mean? Well, it means that the knife can't think. It can't tell the difference between cutting through the stick and cutting through your finger. It's up to you to do that. Oh, I get it. You always have to be careful with the knife, Sam. Exactly. Now look here. You always want to cut away from your body. And keep your other hand out of the way. Okay. At some point, most of us have been exposed to safety rules concerning knives. It's an area that overlaps into many aspects of our lives. Many of us use knives at work, at home, or while enjoying our favorite recreational activities. And while the rules about knife safety, which you may have learned as a youth, still apply, Today's wide variety of knives and various industrial applications for their use require us to stay sharp, always keeping our safety in mind while using industrial knives. Knives in their simplest form consist of a sharp cutting blade and a handle. These knives come in various sizes and are used in a variety of applications. A common variation of a fixed blade knife are those with retractable blades, such as this familiar style commonly called a box cutter or utility knife. When two blades are joined at a pivot point, the leverage created by their handles allows us to cut a wide variety of materials. Of course, we recognize this as a pair of scissors, sometimes called shears. Just remember that the same leverage that allows us to cut through tough material can quickly sever fingers as well. Blades can also be connected to a power source to aid in cutting, such as this fabric cutting knife or this meat cutter. There are countless types and styles of cutting devices. And while each may have a different shape and function, they all have one thing in common. The ability to cause serious injury when used improperly or in a careless manner. And the place most likely to be injured is, unfortunately, one of the worst places for us to sustain such an injury, our hands. In order for our hands to open, close, grasp, and pinch objects, a complex combination of muscles, tendons, and nerves must work together. If any of these structures are damaged, then coordinated motion is no longer possible. Located on the back side of the hand, as well as the palm side, are important groups of tendons. These tendons control such movements as closing and opening our fingers and bending our wrists up or down. When these tendons are cut, these critical movements are no longer possible. The hand and forearm also contain important nerves that provide sensation and control the movement of the muscles. If the portion of nerve responsible for movement is damaged, the hand cannot move in a controlled manner, making grasping and holding objects almost impossible. Unfortunately, lacerated tendons and major nerves cannot repair themselves. They can only be repaired through delicate hand surgery. Even after surgery, it can require months of intensive therapy to regain functional use of the hand. This therapy requires specialized splinting and rigorous rehabilitation exercises, which must be performed every hour the patient is awake over the course of several weeks. This may then be followed by ongoing therapy lasting many months. Unfortunately, many patients aren't emotionally prepared for such a long rehab process and how much this type of injury can impact on their ability to perform even the simplest of tasks, such as writing, dressing, or even driving a car. Oftentimes, these patients give up on the therapy process before they're able to regain full functional hand use. As a hand therapist, I've seen a lot of patients who are surprised at how quickly major damage can occur from just one moment of carelessness. As users of industrial knives, we must avoid any moments of carelessness. As we proceed through this program, we will discuss important safety rules concerning industrial knives and give you some valuable tips to stay safe. No matter what type of application you have or what environment you are working in, keeping a sharp blade makes it easier to cut through material and keep the blade under control. Depending on the type of knife you're using, there are various ways to maintain a sharp blade. When using utility knives, such as this one, the blade may be scored to allow 
allow the gun section to be snapped on and a sharp edge to take its place. When performing this function, always wear safety glasses because the blade may fly away with enough force to cause an eye injury. Always use an assist device to snap the blade, such as a pair of pliers. Never use your hand or force the blade against a solid object. Other types of utility knives require a new blade be installed and the worn one replaced. Many blades can simply be flipped over to expose a new edge, or the blade may need to be completely replaced. In either case, remember that even a worn blade is sharp and must be handled carefully. Only hold the blade on the unsharpened side. When disposing of a used blade, it must be disposed of in a safe manner. Don't just throw a blade into the trash. This places others at risk. The best place to dispose of a used blade is to place it in a container designed to safely handle sharp objects. An alternative disposal method is to carefully wrap several layers of tape around the blade before placing it in a waste container. Check with your supervisor if you are unsure of how to properly dispose of used blades. After installing a new blade, reassemble the knife, making sure all parts are tightened properly. On knives with screws, inspect the threads periodically to make sure they're not stripped. Fixed blade knives must also be kept sharp and in good working condition. Before using a fixed blade knife, check for any signs of damage, such as cracked handles. Make sure the connection between the blade and the handle is secure. Knives with loose blades, damaged handles, or other defects must be removed from service. Fixed blade knives and scissors should only be sharpened by a person properly trained and authorized by the company. Many companies have a specific sharpening schedule for fixed blade knives. The period between sharpening depends on the frequency of use and the type of material being cut. Always follow your company's recommended frequency of changing to a newly sharpened blade, even if you think the blade is working fine. Studies have shown that the effects of a dull blade often begin before the user can perceive a need to change blades. This is especially important when performing tasks which require repetitive cutting. Using a dull blade adds additional strain to the cutting motion, which can contribute to fatigue and the onset of musculoskeletal disorders over time. Of course, many common uses of knives aren't controlled by a regular sharpening schedule. So it's up to us to recognize the signs of a dulling blade. If you notice an increase in the amount of force needed to cut material, or see the blade is tearing material rather than cutting it, it's time to get a new blade. Cutting with a dull blade can lead to a variety of unsafe situations, such as applying so much force the blade bends or breaks, a loss of balance when the blade slips free of the material, or we become so focused trying to cut that we quit paying attention to the path of blade travel, leading to injury. Even with a sharp blade, applying too much pressure can be a source of injury. When cutting thick materials, make several passes, cutting a little bit each time rather than trying to cut through the material all at once. Another safety tip for preventing injuries while using knives is to maintain an awareness of where your body parts are located relative to the path the blade will travel. Of course, we've all heard the advice to always cut away from our body. It works well for whittling a stick, but is usually very awkward in most industrial applications. In fact, when cutting on a flat, stable surface, the most powerful and efficient cutting motion is towards your body. Stand or kneel slightly to one side so the path the blade travel is not into your body should the blade slip. Cutting at a 90 degree angle to your body is also a safe, powerful stroke. When using a guide, be sure to keep your fingers well out of the way in case the blade rides up onto the guide. Before beginning any cutting motion, make sure your free hand is out of the way. This may seem easy when performing simple, slow paced cutting tasks, but when faced with fast paced, repetitive tasks, it takes deliberate concentration and effort to avoid injury. Due to the increased risk of injury in these types of applications, many facilities require the use of a cut-resistant glove worn on the non-cutting hand. One common type of cut-resistant glove is made of cut-resistant fibers, 
And while not cut proof, these do provide some protections from a wayward knife stroke. Another type of cut resistant glove are those made of a metal mesh material. These offer more rugged protection and are often worn when operating a powered knife. Once again, this type of glove is cut resistant, not cut proof. Also, be aware that metal mesh gloves can only be used near a smooth blade. A powered serrated blade can grab the metal mesh material and pull your hand and arm into the cutting blade. Another thing to remember about cut resistant gloves, they provide no protection from puncture wounds. Some facilities intentionally dull the point of all knife blades to reduce the risk of puncture wounds. Cut resistant gloves are useful in many situations, but they should never take the place of working safely. When using knives, keep in mind that co-workers may inadvertently enter the path of blade travel. Under ideal conditions, co-workers should stay at least an arm's length away from an exposed blade. However, in many applications, this is simply not possible. When using a knife in close proximity to others, it is critical to keep the blade under control. Avoid making large sweeping cuts, which may carry your blade into an aisle or near a co-worker. Also, when approaching a worker using a knife, make sure they're aware of your presence before entering the cutting area. Never attempt to cut an object when either you or the object is unstable. Where possible, place objects on a flat, stable surface before cutting. When this is not possible, at least make sure you have a stable stance and a clear path for blade travel before cutting. Using common sense and good safety practices while cutting can prevent many knife injuries. However, you must keep safety in mind before and after cutting as well. Never hold or carry a knife by the blade. Any type of mishap could lead to an injury. This includes handing the knife to someone else while holding the blade. Never place knives with exposed blades in your pocket, even for a moment. This all too familiar practice is a danger to both you and your coworkers. To prevent these types of situations, always return fixed blade knife to its sheath, scabbard, or designated storage area. When using knives with retractable blades, always close the blade when finished or before handing it to another worker. Simply following good housekeeping practices can prevent many knife injuries. Allowing an exposed blade to get mixed into a toolbox or other storage area is an accident waiting to happen. Only use a knife for its intended purpose, never as a pry tool or screwdriver. Should you happen to drop a knife, never attempt to catch it. It's better to let it hit the floor than risk grabbing the blade. For this reason, fully enclosed leather boots or shoes are recommended when working with knives. If you must travel while holding a fixed blade knife, keep the tip pointed down and walk carefully. Stay alert for co-workers who may be in your travel path. Many types of knives have built-in safety features, such as automatically retracting blades or special guards built into the knife to provide additional protection. These devices are only as good as the person using the knife. They should never be defeated or removed. Remember, any time you might save by taking chances or being in a hurry while using a knife is trivial compared to the rehabilitation required to recover from a serious hand laceration. Of course, every cut does not cause major damage, but even minor cuts must be reported and treated properly. Failing to properly treat a wound, especially in an industrial or food processing environment, can lead to serious infections. Make sure you are familiar with your company's procedures for reporting a cut or other injury, because only through the reporting process can the company ensure that you receive proper first aid and that your work area and knife blade are properly decontaminated to eliminate the risks presented by blood-borne pathogens. Because we use knives so often, both at work and in our homes, we can become complacent to the dangers. Don't allow a poor safety attitude to place you at risk for a hand injury. Keep your safety commitments sharp while using any type of industrial knife. And always remember, the blade may be sharp, but it's not very bright. That part is up to you. Have a good day and a safe day.